Yes, and uh, Sweden is playing host to another round of talks on the future of the EU after elections rattled Europe two weeks ago. Leaders from Britain, Germany and the Netherlands are converging for a two-day meeting to resolve dispute over the next EU president and reform for reforms for the bloc. But the process has been criticized for lacking transparency or public support. And with me on set, I'm glad to have him on set, I-24 News London correspondent Jonathan Sasadoti. Good to have you here and good to have you in Israel. Great to be here. So uh, let's try to look how big of a division is the issue of the EU presidency? Well, it's an interesting question because the way that this works is rather mysterious when you think about it. Most of the European electorate don't know how this person is chosen. And as more and more Eurosceptic parties have done well across Europe, there seems to be a sense that changes should be taking place within Europe. And yet the primary candidate who is up for becoming the new president is one who believes in more close cooperation between the different countries and more political collaboration. And that's why David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, has taken this firm position that he absolutely doesn't want Juncker to be the next president. And he's rallying support from other states to try and convince Angela Merkel of that fact that they should choose somebody else to be the president. So, Jonathan, if we, after the shocking uh, results that we saw, um, if we want to look at the balance of power right now in the EU, what is the balance of power there? Well, the shock was, of course, that some far-right and even far-left parties uh, managed to gain more seats within the European elections. But the actual fact of the matter is that the majority of the parties that won across Europe were actually still centre-right and that that was still uh, keeping a level of normality within the European Parliament. So what uh, people are reading that as is a sign that more and more citizens in Europe are actually disappointed with how the EU is working or they don't understand how it works. And so the essential the thing here, David Cameron says, and he's trying to convince Angela Merkel and others of this fact, is that they should choose someone who's going to prioritize changes and reforms so that Brussels will be less bossy, less big in the future, and it can become more of a market and less of a parliament governing all of the people. Yeah, I know if it's difficult for us in the media to understand what is going on there, I don't want to know how difficult it is for our viewers to understand what is going on there. Jonathan uh, Sasha Doty, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for being here.